Hey friends, Worm here and come watch the beautiful sunset with me because today we are actually going to be talking about sunset items in Destiny 2, including weapons as well as location, stuff like that. Uh, and we're going to kind of just talk about it here. This content was the idea of a sub by the name of Broderick Foster. So thank you for that. Um, but yeah, he asked how we would bring back content and stuff like that. So I figured we'd just make a whole video about sunset content. So let's get into it. First of all, when did sunsetting first happen? And we, to, in order to, to, to go over that, we have to go way, way back prior to Beyond Light, actually almost even prior to Shadowkeep. Not quite, but Season of the Undying was the last season that Destiny 2 had where, I'm sorry, was the season after, which is Season of Arrivals, I should say. Season of Arrivals was the first season of Destiny where anything earned prior to Season 10 was Sunset. Okay, and sunsetting was basically weapons and armors now had a power level cap, right? So, you know, the the weapons and armor from, uh, what was it, Season of Undying, which was a fantastic season, or, or maybe it wasn't Season of Undying, maybe it was the season after that. Um, I can't remember the name of it, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But basically, weapons would have a power cap, and those power caps were meant to last, you know, about three seasons, right? They, that's That was Bungie's thing. They said, hey, you know, after three seasons you know, the, you're not going to be able to power your weapons up anymore. And the reason Bungie says that they did this was because they wanted players to experiment with new weapons. Because let's be honest, in Destiny 2, many of the weapons that us veterans have are really old weapons that can just constantly be re-leveled, you know, or, or brought up to the next power cap. You know, I have many weapons, legendary weapons, not just exotic weapons, but legendary weapons that I got many, many seasons ago that I still use to this day regularly, right? And so Bungie, they said that their idea with this was to make players, you know, play around with new stuff, blah, 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 you know, and stuff like that. Of course, players immediately did not like the idea of having basically all their gear taken from them yet again, because that's essentially what happened in Destiny 2. You, you know, we build our characters in D1 up, got them super powerful, all the god rolls we could want, and then Destiny 2 came out, and all that was taken away, and we had to start fresh. Sunsetting, very, very similar content, concept in the eyes of veteran players. So a lot of players were resistant to that, and they didn't like that. So, of course, Bungie, they, they went about their business, you know, and sure enough, weapons got sunset. Now, the thing is, I think sunsetting lasted three seasons, you know, three seasons is, is when sunsetting lasts, but officially the last season that you could actually obtain like legacy gear as it's called, I believe was, uh, whatever, whatever season you get the savior title. And I really can't remember the name of the season, but it was the whole season themed around St. 14 and the St. 14 weapons, blah, blah, blah. Um, anything after that, of course, can now be uh, infused up to power. The thing that Bungie did though i guess can we say that the thing that bungie did is they added in the days of uh, prior to sunsetting you know they added some very very powerful weapons okay and when i say powerful i mean meta defining meta shifting weapons these weapons include things like the recluse the mountaintop uh what else loaded question uh what else that's all i can think of off the top of my head mainly is recluse and mountaintop and then revoker the the, the three crucible pinnacle weapons and that's another term that is no longer existent today is pinnacle weapons and pinnacle weapons were meant to be the like premier standard of legendary weapons right like they were meant to do they're they're to me it feels like bungie designed pinnacle weapons to be mini exotics you could not get other roles on you know for example recluse master of arms was its its special unique perk you couldn't get Master of Arms on any other weapon, you know, um, Mountaintop had Micro Missile. You couldn't get Micro Missile on any other, any other weapon, any other grenade launcher, anything at the time. So these weapons, they almost filled the role of an exotic, but of course they were legendary and they were insanely, insanely powerful. In fact, like Revoker, for example, Revoker was a sniper where if you missed your shot, it would literally give you the ammo back, right? So it totally busted ammo economy because players could take shots and if they missed, oh, well, you know, we get it back. What's, what's the big deal? You know, Recluse, my God, Recluse was an absolute nightmare to deal with. Recluse was a submachine gun, a lightweight submachine gun, where when you got a kill with any weapon, whether it was a sniper, 
your heavy or the recluse itself, you got a five second damage buff that's dealt like 80 something percent more damage to the body and then 20 something percent to the head. Basically, you were hitting, whether it was body or crits, 25 damage. And so you would melt people in 0.4 seconds with literally no effort at all. And it was insanely, insanely good. And of course, the, the issue behind these two weapons is they were locked behind a PvP, um, a miserable PvP grind, right? That many players didn't want to do, okay? Myself included, I didn't want to do it. Now I went out and I did it and I grind it so I could get them because they were so good, but it was miserable. And of course, Bungie realized, I think, after the fact that these, these weapons that they had designed were problematic you know and i'm i'm surprised it took them as long as it did to realize they're problematic but not only did they realize the weapons were problematic but they also realized that the the class of weapon the pinnacle weapon that they created is problematic because they're many, they're literally exotic weapons that aren't quite as powerful even though i would argue that it's 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 more powerful like recluse in its prime was more powerful than any exotic in the game. I mean, and Recluse was often compared to Taraba because I believe they came out in the same season. And why would you even worry about trying to get Taraba? Because Taraba, you had to charge up to get that damage boost. Recluse, you just had to get a kill. One kill is all it needed and it could chain and chain and chain and chain and chain forever. But Bungie sunset weapons. And I believe, as well as many others in the Destiny community, believe that the true reason why they sunset weapons is because they realized they made a mistake with these these pinnacle weapons and they wanted to get away from that mistake and they wanted to start fresh with the ritual weapons which are you know almost god rolls you know they're 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 meant to be a step between a standard roll and a god roll on a weapon right and that's what they did you know we got uh we got things like um what is the exit strategy you know exit strategy decent weapon not a god roll but it was pretty decent you know and then so on and so forth we got you know more of those weapons that were like hey you know, this is this is a pretty decent weapon, but nothing, nothing crazy meta defining anything like that. And so that's why I believe, and that's why many other people believe that weapons were sunset from Destiny 2 was because of pinnacles, not because of memory and, and all that other stuff that Bungie said. And maybe that had a little bit to do with it, but that's where the idea of sunsetting weapons and armor came from. Now let's move forward to sunsetting content because this actually happened in Beyond Light, which was 20, 2020. I'm not mistaken. Or was it 2021? I don't remember. Anyways, doesn't matter. Beyond Light came out and Beyond Light brought with it, you know, Bungie saying, hey, you know, we're going to take away a bunch of locations so that we can revamp them and make them better. Because the whole thing with, with Beyond Light is they're bringing Europa into the game. And, and one of the big selling points of Beyond Light and Europa was that Europa had this dynamic weather and, you know, it, it felt like the world really was alive. Um, which honestly, I don't even remember the last time I went to Europa, uh, for any reason at all, even doing a strike. I haven't done that, that strike on Europa in forever, but that was Bungie saying, they said, you know, we want to do that with all the planets. You know, we want to take Mars away and we want to revamp it. So there's like sandstorms on Mars and, you know, we want to take away, uh, what was another one? The tangled shore so that we can make, you know, dynamic stuff on the tangled shore. Maybe like, you know, less gravity, blah, blah, blah. I don't remember exactly what Bungie said, but that was their uh, that was their idea that they said at the time was, you know, we want to make these things better. They also said that, you know, the game was also getting a little bit too big, which made it difficult to add more locations, blah, blah, blah. You know, and of course, players bought into it. You know, they said, hey, OK, like, that sounds good. You know, we get we get more, you know, you're going to take and revamp these worlds and make them cool and fresh, blah, blah, blah. OK, like, sure, that's fine. You know, and also the game is getting too big. OK, like, yeah, that's fine course many players cautioned against it they said this is not a good thing this is setting a bad precedent and now look those players are probably like <laughs> i told y'all so but anyways that was the premise of of sunsetting you know content in, in terms of that now we've been in this little loop here uh with what's been going on you know in the community and the upheaval that's been going on with bungie i don't believe that they took away these old locations to revamp them i think they took away these old locations to bring them back and sell them to us in the future this season is a prime example we got titan back titan used to be in the game okay titan used to be a place for, for my rather new players a place where you could go in patrol and you could explore you know, you could go into the arcology, you could, you know, walk around on the rig, stuff like that. And it wasn't a very 
big location, but it still was a location. It was one of the places that was sunset, you know, and that's why this season, you know, they talk about, oh, Titan is back. This, you know, mysteriously it's back somehow. We don't really know how all that works, I guess, or maybe I need to catch up on uh, lore videos, but I think that Bungie took these locations away to sell them back to us because of course, uh, what was it? Not last season, but the season before last, we got Mars back in the same way. You know, it's not back as a full location. They did not revamp any weather on Titan or on uh, on um, Mars. Sorry. You know, yeah, we got new locations on Titan, which was pretty good. But at the same time, like it's that wasn't what was told to us. We just, we were told we were going to get fresh, cool, dynamic weather and stuff like that. We didn't get those for Mars. We didn't get it for Titan. I don't think we're going to get it for Io if we ever get Io back. But, you know, who's to say? Um, but yeah, I think that's the reason why Bungie sunset it. However, I want to talk also about what I think Bungie should do in terms of bringing content back. Because Broderick here actually had a pretty good idea. He, he brought up one of two ideas. Okay. Uh, he said, basically, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read from the comment here uh, to make it easier on me. He said, would we get it all back uh, or would we get it all back in a yearly update similar to something like with Age of Triumphs in Destiny 1? Or... Uh, you know, and that would be to not over, or, uh, sorry, hang on. Let me, let me, huh. would it be all at once in a yearly update with like a, something like Tri Age of Triumphs, which Age of Triumphs was back in D1. We're not going to go into detail on what that was. Or would it be like some kind of a roadmap after Lightfall, like post Lightfall, you know, hey, we get back, you know, uh, Mars, for example, as a, a destination that we can go to and explore, you know, so that players can explore it and, and learn more, blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, the next season we bring in, um, you know, something else, you know, as to not overload players. Right. And I do think that he's onto something here. Uh, I think that bringing back sunset content is actually a way that Bungie could potentially keep destiny Two alive as, as bad as it may feel, or as, as, you know, like, oh, like that's a dirty move, blah, blah, blah. I think that that would be a more likely and a better way to bring it back because there are a ton of Destiny 2 players that have never got to experience Titan, Io, uh, Mars, Tangled Shore, like a whole bunch of locations. And this would be an opportunity to bring these places back so that players could experience them again. And it would be a way to keep Destiny 2 alive. You know, because that's the thing that I think everybody's worried about is post Lightfall, what's going to keep Destiny 2 alive? And we've, we, I mean, we've talked about it on the channel here. There's not really much like, you know, the whole light and darkness saga story, blah, blah, blah thing. Like that's all Destiny's ever been. So once it's over, where are they going to go? We don't know. We hope that Bungie brings in something new and fresh and cool and has a whole nother storyline, a whole nother saga that lasts another 10 years, blah, blah, blah. You know, we got all these hopes and dreams, but I think a, a realistic version would be to bring these places back as you know, free, obviously not paid, but free locations post destiny Two. you know, and have, have strikes and stuff come back with them. You know, uh, Titan can bring back the, um, the song of Savathun, I think is what the strike was called. I can't really remember, but it was a strike that took place on Titan. Not a bad strike by any means. Like it was, it was a pretty fun strike. It was a good strike. Bring it back, give it to players for free. Let them, let them get their hands on it. Like that would feel like something that could potentially keep destiny Two alive for longer, you know, and even though it's not new content and I know everybody says, Oh, you know, we want, we want new, we want new stuff. Like, yes, but the reality that we're facing in destiny two is there's not going to be a lot of new stuff post lightfall. I would assume, you know, especially with the rate that Bungie is currently going with, you know, all, all their content and stuff that they've been doing quite frankly. But, um, yeah, that would be one way I'd bring back locations as for weapons. Um, and again, this is this kind of brings back the 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 idea that Bungie took away things like black armory weapons so that they could be sold to us again in the future. Mm, especially with this season, getting the gambit weapons back because for those of you who may not know, the weapons that we got from this season, the uh, the non craftable ones, were literally gambit weapons that you could obtain back in season seven. They were sunset out, which means if you had say a bug out bag from way back then, of course you can't you can't upgrade it. You know, it's stuck at low power level. So you can't use it in PVE. You can use it in PVP still, but you can't use it in PVE to any real effect. Bungie brought him back, right? I think this was a kind of a, quite frankly, a dirty play. However, however, I don't see that it's necessarily a bad thing to have these weapons back because the weapons are good. Outlast, the pulse rifle, 
was a good weapon. It's always been a good weapon. You know, if we got Black Armory weapons back, the Black Armory weapons were, number one, some of the sexiest looking weapons in the game. Like, 100%. They looked so good. But number two, they were also some of the best. You know, the, the perks that we got on the Last Wish weapons, you know, that have some crazy combo. Like, Kill Clip, Rampage, stuff like that. These were featured, these were the types of roles that were featured on the Black Armory weapons. So... I would like to see the black armory weapons come back. And I think that basically just kind of bringing them back is, is, is how Bungie should do it. You know, in terms of the weapons and sun, sunset weapons, sunset armors, bring them back just like they've been doing. You know, I would say make new stuff. God, Bungie, please make new stuff, but bring back old stuff as well. You know, next season, for example, we get black armory weapons back, make, you know, have the black armory weapons be world drops or not world drops, but you know, random drops, you know, similar to how the gambit weapons are currently. And then make the craftable weapons, of course, not, you know, not black armory weapons or maybe go all out, make, you know, make some black armory weapons craftable. Others not, I don't know, but, uh, yeah, this is this has been a long-winded speech on how to bring it back, but I really, you know, Broderick, I really like your idea here on bringing it back slowly after Destiny 2, like post Destiny 2, like bring back stuff from the wed, uh, <laughs> the Red War, sorry, you know, and I don't really know how that would play out super well in the current state of Destiny because the Red War happened so long ago, so much has happened in the lore and stuff like that since the Red War that I don't really know if it would be like feasible. You know, in, in, in the case of the Red War, outside of the campaign, there's not really much you could bring back to it. It's like, you know, we still have the tower and stuff like that. Like, you know, maybe bring back just a playable campaign so players can experience what's actually happened back in the day. Uh, you know, same thing with like Forsaken. Like, why is Forsaken a big deal in terms of lore? Because Forsaken is literally one of the biggest turning points in lore history in Destiny 2, and you can't even play the campaign anymore, so... I don't know. I think that at this point we're, we're rambling on, we had a long winded explanation, but that's my thoughts on sunsetting, why Bungie did it and what I would do to change it. Um, yeah. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below though. Uh, what do you think about sunsetting? How do you think they should revert it? Uh, or do you think they should revert it? Blah, blah, blah. Like the video. If you enjoyed it, subscribe for more daily destiny content and uh, watch the video you see on the end screen here, because for whatever reason, YouTube thinks you'll like it. I'll see you on the next one.